So hi everyone, uh, my name is Nicole, I'm here with Elaine, and both of us are part of the Society of Women Engineers. Um, so we both just wanted to give you a little bit of background on ourselves and then talk about some of the opportunities that SWE has. So I actually didn't know anything about SWE when I was in high school either. Um, I learned about it during my senior year, so SWE has a scholarship um, or multiple scholarships. We give away thousands and thousands of dollars to support girls who are excited about STEM and about engineering and getting involved in those fields. So when I was I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I really liked doing the engineering side of things, so I had worked in a lab for a couple summers at UCLA um, in a bioengineering lab, um, but I also really liked the business side. Um, so I was part of a floral arrangement business, actually, that was run by my school, and so we did everything from marketing to sales to actually like putting the flower arrangements together. So that was really cool. Um, I went to Penn for college, and what's really neat is they have a program called the Management and Technology Program, and so you get a degree from their business school and a degree from their engineering school. So I ended up going um, to do entrepreneurial management and bioengineering as my bachelor's and mechanical engineering for my master's. Um, so I just want to share a little bit of how SWE was able to affect my college experience. It was amazing. Um, I think the thing that really impresses me most about SWE is that it really touches on three different aspects. So you have the outreach part of it, so getting to speak with you guys, um, getting to engage with K-12 students, and really get them excited about STEM and show them what's possible. Um, the second part is with the professional development, so being able to look at resumes, do mock interviews, um, just grow yourself personally and professionally I think is so important no matter what field you end up going into. And then third, just the fun social aspects. So the fact that you guys are getting to have lunch here right now, um, getting to engage with people at different socials and things like that is just really fun. Um, so I have in the upper left-hand corner, it's a picture of the Sweet Boston group here. So everyone in the Boston area um, can be part of that. Um, I was on the board of directors actually for SWE during my senior year, um, super senior year when I was doing my um, master's, which is really cool. So getting to interact with people um, from all around the world and really move the strategy of SWE forward. Um, and then just a couple fun pictures, one from my collegiate section at Penn um, with our engineering chip t-shirts and then um, a fun photo booth at one of our annual conferences. Um, so Elaine, if you want to tell a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, how many of you people like uh, math classes. Quite a few. <laughs> what about science classes? Quite a, just about everybody, right? How many of you like English? Still a lot of people, right? About writing. So I will tell you right now that um, when I started in high school, I actually hated my science classes. And so I'm here to tell you about my journey from being an English major to becoming an engineer. And so when I was in, uh, in high school, I actually hated science class because all we did was fill in, the fill in the blank worksheets. We didn't do anything like, you know, take apart cameras like you guys are doing today. Um, and so I was really bored with science even though I was really good at it. So when I applied to college, I went to Rice University. I um, decided to become an English major. And at the end of the, the, my freshman year, I applied for an internship in writing at the Texas Heart Institute. And so basically what they did there was they took all the writing that any of the surgeons did on all the surgeries that they do, or all the science research that they do, and they, try, they send it to us so that way we can actually put it into a form that everybody else can read. And so while I was sitting there and like, you know, they, they wanted me because they wanted me to correct their English or like, you know, make sure that, that the ideas flowed well. But while I was reading all these things, I had no idea what they were saying. I didn't know what was going on. Um, you know, there's a lot of disconnect that people say that scientists don't know how to explain things to everybody else. And so that was the problem that I was seeing, and I didn't know what was going on. So I asked my boss, can I go see a surgery? I don't know what they're talking about. And while I was in that surgery room, uh, the surgery I saw was on a cow that had had a mechanical valve implanted into the heart. And this valve had failed. Now, I mean, you know, that's really disappointing, right? But there are a lot of things that we can learn from failure. And so everything that they were doing when, as they were taking out the valve and running tests through the cow and figuring out what went wrong, I started to see, wow, you know, there are these real applications of science that can be really fascinating. And so as I was working my way through the summer, I thought more and more about these experiences and these things that I was seeing in the, in the science realm, in the research realm. And I was like, okay, you know, maybe I can go back to school and check out a bioengineering class. 
And I have to tell you that I loved it. So when I went to graduate school, um, because I had seen all these failures with these mechanical valves um, and with all these heart devices, I thought maybe tissue engineering would be a better way to go. Do you know, does anybody here know what tissue engineering is? Would you like to tell us? Oh, no, that's fine. So um, for, for people who are not aware of tissue engineering, tissue engineering is figuring out how we can use cells from the body and figuring out how we can implant them and put them into repair for our tissues. That way we can um, not use mechanical devices. And the problem with that is that a lot of things that uh, it's very hard to get our cells to do what we want them to do, right? We don't know enough about them. Um, and so, so that when I became um, a graduate student in biomedical engineering, I decided I wanted to work with stem cells. They can turn into any different potential cell type, right? So that, the thing that was fascinating is I knew a lot about stem cells, and I was trying to tell all these people, but it was really difficult to, to, for people to understand that. And so as I was going through my journey and trying to tell people, this is interesting, this is fascinating, this is why you should learn it, I realized more and more people need to understand that they need to have an English background and need to have a writing background as well. And so my love in English, in English and writing came back, and now the two have merged. And so right now I'm applying for a lot of uh, positions in uh, journal editing as an editor for like nature or like science. Um, I'm sure you've heard of some of these journals. And basically what I'm going to do is going to be combining my love of science and engineering and turning it into writing that everybody else can understand. And so that way we can get even more people excited. <laughs> so we just want to share a few different opportunities that you can look into um, no matter what grade you're in. And I think it's really cool to just kind of keep these on the back of your mind because you never know what might get you really excited about something. Um, so one program that's really neat and is run by the society as a whole is SWE Next. And so this is for um, girls who are up to the age of 18, I believe. And so what you can do is there's tons of different activities that are through the program. Um, you can learn about scholarships that are available to you. Um, they do quarterly webinars so that you can kind of interact with the rest of the community around you and um, just get to see other girls who are really excited about it. Um, so definitely look into that. Um, it's a really great thing that we launched um, either last year or a couple years ago, and it's really been exploding. Um, the other thing that I would say, since I assume most of you are based in the Boston area, um, look into some of the events that are hosted by SWE sections. So um, us from SWE Boston, um, we host things as a professional section. Um, this is a taste of some of the activities that we did this year. And so you can see we partner with the Girl Scouts. We partner with a lot of organizations, partner Kristen for the girls who build. Um, and we also get to interact with a lot of the community events. So the Cambridge Science Festival, for instance, which happened a couple um, months ago. Um, the other thing I would say is also look into some of the collegiate SWE events. I know MIT has a huge presence with their SWE section, and they do a lot of outreach opportunities um, for high school girls. Um, and a lot of the other SWE sections in the area do that as well. Um, and I think just like the biggest takeaway is that you never know what might excite you. Um, I certainly did not imagine that I would be working at Microsoft now, um, with my background being bioengineering, mechanical engineering. But as long as you're passionate about something, and as Elaine said, you can go from English into science as well, um, there's just really so much potential for you. Um, so if you want to get in touch with us, um, I put my contact here and then the SWE Boston section contacts as well. Um, so if you have any questions about some of the outreach event things um, that we do, feel free to get in touch with us. Cool. Thank you very much.